Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go over how to analyze your graphs in advanced higher physics. Now, this will probably be most useful for you in the project, but you might also see some questions on this in the final exam as well. So let's get started. Now, the first thing to look at is something called error bars. So when we're plotting a graph and you know your absolute uncertainties and your values, then we can use these absolute uncertainties on the graph and we plot them as error bars. So the uncertainty may be known for one axis only or both axes and maybe different sizes as shown here. So let's say you have your y-axis and your uncertainty in your y-axis values then we can represent this as the plus values as these ones up here and the minus values as these ones. So that's, that's where your plus or minus is shown there in the graph. And also if you had your x-axis values and they had an uncertainty as well, you could have your horizontal bars here. So that would be your minus value there and your plus value there. And the next thing to note is that when drawing a straight line graph, the best fit line should pass through all of the error bar lines, even if it does not pass through any of the plotted points. That's it's just a rule that you're going to need to use when you're plotting graphs for your project or the final exam. So let's look at an example and let's say you were carrying out an experiment from the higher course where you looked at the charge on a capacitor versus the voltage across the capacitor. So you're charging up a capacitor and you're measuring the voltage across it and measuring the charge on the capacitor as well. So let's say we got these voltage values as our results and these charge values in microcoulombs as our results. Then let's say we plot these results in a graph. The graph would look something like this and there's lots of parts to this graph so I'm going to break it down for you. So let's say we're plotting the charge in microcoulombs on the y-axis and the voltage in volts on the x-axis. So the first thing you would do is you would plot the points from the table onto the graph. So there's my first point, second point, third point, fourth point and fifth point there. Now the next thing you would want to do is draw on your error bars. So in this example, let's say we were using the scale reading uncertainties in our values of voltage and our values of uh, charge. So let's say our errors in the voltage were plus or minus 0.2 volts and our error in the charge values was plus or minus 1 microcoulombs. Then we could hopefully see that our horizontal bars are for the voltage, so our error bars should be plus or minus 0.2 volts in length. So we've got plus 0.2 volts there and the minus 0.2 volts there and that happens for each point plotted on our graph. And considering the uncertainty in the charge, which is plus or minus one microcoulombs, then we should see that the bars for the y-axis are plus one there and minus one there, and plus one there and minus one there, and so on for every point. So in this case, we do have uncertainties in both our y and our x values. Now, the last thing to point out on our graph is this red dot here. So this is called the centroid. And what is the centroid? Well, if we look below here, it tells us a bit about the centroid. So it says here that straight line graphs should also pass through the centroid, the xy coordinates, which are the average of all the x values and all the y values. And we've shown this with the red dot on the graph. And how would we get the coordinates for our centroid in this example? Well, all we would need to do is go back to the table and we take the average of each column. So we would take our five voltages, add them up and divide by five, and we would get the x coordinate for the centroid in volts. And then we would take our charge values, add them all up and divide by five, and we would get our y value for the centroid in micro coulombs. So if we do that we should get x and y coordinates of 6.3 and 13.4 and that can be represented on the graph as this here. And you can hopefully see that the line of best fit passes through the centroid as well as all of the error bars. Now, if you'd rather use Microsoft Excel to plot your graphs rather than hand drawing them during your project, then Microsoft Excel will plot your error bars and your line of best fits for you, and these will insert them automatically after clicking a few buttons. Now, a common theme in both higher and advanced higher physics is finding the gradient from your straight line on a graph. And because this topic is all about uncertainties, we're gonna need to find the uncertainty in the gradient as well. Now, before we go on and look at two manual methods of doing this, if you're interested in doing this in Microsoft Excel using the line est function, then just ask your teacher for more information on how to do this. But this is going to be a quick way of finding your gradient from your graph and also the uncertainty in the gradient. So hopefully you already know how to find the gradient from a straight line on your graph, and that's using this relationship here from maths. So you want to choose two points in your line that are far apart, one at either end, so your x1, y1 coordinates and your x2, y2 coordinates, and then you calculate the gradient m using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or your change in y divided by your change in x. Now to find the uncertainty in the gradient, we're gonna look at two manual methods. So the first one relies on finding the maximum and minimum gradient from the graph. So let's look at the previous graph of charge versus voltage with some new features added. And you'll see I've also removed the centroid from the graph just to make it a bit clearer. Now the new features added here are the two sets of dashed lines, which are the maximum gradient and the minimum gradient. 
So we've got the maximum gradient going from here to here and the minimum gradient going from here to here. So how do we draw these? Well, you'll notice that the maximum gradient line, the dashed line starts at the top of this error bar for this furthest away point and it joins up at the other end at the bottom of this error bar here. Similarly, to find the minimum gradient, we go from this side. So we go from the bottom of this error bar to the top of this error bar. Now you'll notice that these dashed lines both pass through all the error bars. And remember that's a key rule that we need to remember. So if we find out the maximum gradient and the minimum gradient from those two dashed lines on the graph, and remember we would do this in the same way as finding the gradient on a straight line. So we would just choose our two points in the line and do our change in Y over the change in X for both. Then we can estimate the uncertainty in our overall gradient, which is the maximum gradient minus the minimum gradient divided by two. Now the second manual method of finding the uncertainty in your gradient is called the parallelogram method. So let's consider a graph of voltage against current with a line of best fit and error bars as shown in this picture here. So you've got voltage and volts on the y-axis against current and milliamps on the x-axis. So you've got your straight line of best fit, your points and your error bars. Now you'll also notice two darker lines either side of our line of best fit which form the shape of a parallelogram. And these lines above and below the line of best fit are drawn passing through the highest plotted point and the lowest plotted point away from the best fit line. So we've called these A, B and C, D on the picture. So you'll see there the highest plotted point away from the best fit line is this one. So that line on top A, B is going to pass through that and then that's parallel to the best fit straight line. And you've got this line below the best fit straight line, which is passing through the lowest plotted point away from the line, which is this one here or this one here at the end. They're both the same distance away. So once we've created a parallelogram, we can draw on two diagonals, AD and CB in this case. So if I look up here, I would draw my two diagonals from A to D. So from this point here to this point here and from B to C, so from this point here to this point here. Once I've got those two diagonals, I would then find the gradients of those two diagonals, just like we did before, choosing two points in the line and plugging them into the change in Y over the change in X. And then we could estimate the total uncertainty in our gradient from this relationship here. So it's the uncertainty in the gradient is equal to the uncertainty of our diagonal line CB minus the uncertainty in our diagonal line AD divided by two times the square root of N minus two, where N is the number of data points or the number of points on our graph, which would be seven in this case. Now, if we just look at this expression in a bit more detail, you can hopefully see that if we increase the number of data points on your graph, we're gonna make the denominator of this fraction bigger, which means that we make the uncertainty in the gradient smaller. So in order to reduce the uncertainty in our final result, we could take more measurements to increase the end value and that would give us more data points on our graph. One last thing to mention is that these two manual methods of finding the gradient of your line of best fit on a graph can be quite tricky to do properly. So some of you might want to look into using the line est feature in Microsoft Excel because that's gonna make sure your lines are nice and straight and it's gonna do a lot of the hard graft for you. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you found this useful. If you did, give it one of these and make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.